I just put out a brand new Power Morph transition effect video, and in that video, I made a badge flipping effect. And I realized after a bunch of you asking me how to do that effect, I haven't made that tutorial yet. Yes, you can do it in the free version. And not only can you do this effect on car badges, but you can do it on any sort of logo or pretty much anything that you want to do this effect on. And make sure to stick around to the end because there's a little extra sauce that you won't want to miss. All right, so let's open up DaVinci Resolve and get started. Here I have a sequence of clips. And the first thing I did was I applied one of my LUTs to all of the footage. As you can see, all of these clips have no speed ramping yet. So I'm going to speed ramp this first clip. I'm gonna do Alt or Option on my keyboard and press R to bring up the speed change. Click on the drop down and add a speed point. I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna drag this up like this. Right click on the clip and select Retime Curve. Let's open this up. Click on the little dot and let's round it out. I'm gonna bring this back quite a bit. Pull this up even more. I'm also gonna tighten this up a little bit to get a good fast speed ramp. On to the next clip. I'm going to actually speed ramp the first 90% of this clip. Do the same exact thing, bring up the speed change options, add a speed point, click at the top of the clip and drag it all the way up. And before I get too high of a number, I like to right click, retime curve and smooth it out. Just because sometimes if you go too far, too high in the number, you won't actually be able to edit this little speed point. Come on DaVinci Resolve, you can fix this. Continue to drag it up and speed ramp this next clip to your liking. Drag it up so it touches with this clip. I'm going to duplicate it, drag it over like so. I'm gonna right click on it, new compound clip, right click on it again, and then select change clip speed. Let's reverse the speed. So now we have something that looks like that. And now we can speed ramp this to go about right there. What you wanna do is since this has a good clear view of the badge, we want to duplicate this clip and drag it up above it. Right click on the clip, select new compound clip, then come up here to clip at the top and come down to freeze frame. Then right click on the clip, select new fusion clip, click on fusion. With the media in one selected, select polygon. Click invert so we can see what we're going to mask out. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to go around the logo just by clicking multiple points all the way around. Then select invert. Highlight all the points and smooth it out by clicking on this icon here. Scroll through the timeline to the very end. With the media in one selected, hold down shift and press spacebar and type in DVE. If you look at the center of the screen, you will see the pivot adjustment move if you move the pivot X and Y over here. So what you wanna do is move the pivot crosshairs into the center of the logo, just like that. Then come down here to the Y adjustment under the rotation. Over here on the right-hand side next to the Y, select the keyframe button. Come to the very beginning, then type in negative 720. So now we have the badge animation spinning effect. With the DVE node selected, come up here to the spline select the Y rotation option, click on this little box right here to show the entire thing. What you can do is select the, la the second point and push S on your keyboard. So now it'll kind of spin. Do the same thing on the first point, but then let's go ahead and drag it up like this. So it kind of creates a curve just like that. You can make any adjustments here to get the spinning momentum or whatever you're trying to do just by adjusting these two points. Click on spline to dis make the window disappear. Go ahead and click on DVE1, hold down shift and press spacebar and type in transform, add it. Then move the pivot just like we did on the DVE node to the center of the logo. Make sure the X matches up right in the middle of it. The reason we do that is so whenever we make the adjustments of the center X and Y, it makes sense according to the logo and not the center of this entire frame. Come to the very beginning, and keyframe the size. I'm gonna type in 10. We also wanna keyframe the movement of this coming into the clip as a transition. In order to do so, you wanna click on the center X and Y keyframe icon, and let's go ahead and move it out of the frame. Since we want it coming in and slamming into the speed ramp, we wanna to scroll to the end of this clip and put this back to default. 
So put 0.5 for center X and Y. And then let's go ahead and just click this little dot to center it again. So now it comes in like that. Now this is where it gets fun. You can do some really cool movement with the transform pathways. So if you click on the transform two and come up here to spline, you'll have some adjustments here. So for now, I'm just going to select transform two. And if you want, you can just experiment, select all the points and push S to smooth everything out. With just the displacement selected, I want to see what it looks like when I just smooth these out. So I highlight those points. Cool. And what's also cool is if you want it to like swoop in or something, you can just make adjustments here and pull down and then see how it kind of swoops in. So you can get creative with it. You can basically kind of do whatever you want. Then make sure to come up here to the settings and select the motion blur and turn it up to 10. Then come back to the edit tab. With our fusion clip here selected, go ahead and drag it all the way over until the end of it matches up with the beginning of this next clip. So now here's the special sauce. By the way, both of the things I'm gonna show you, you can easily download, double click and install right into your effects dropdown library. This is a brand new tool I just created. Click on effects, then click on effects again, click on the dropdown, and I'm going to use my brand new Jamie Fenn Ultra Impact Tool. In order to use it, what you do is you drag the adjustment clip over where you want to have this effect, and then go ahead and drag the plugin on top of the adjustment clip. Now this plugin is badass, and it's available linked down in the description. So this plugin has a bunch of parameters. You can adjust the rotation, the shake, the RGB distance, the glow edge width, fully adjustable and customizable. And what's also great about this plugin is it adjusts to the length of the adjustment clip. You can also use it as a transition. So in this case, I'm going to have it fade in like this by adjusting this top fade in adjustment. So then when the impact happens, you kind of have this like boom. And not only did I release this plugin, but here's even more special sauce. Come over here to the effects. We're going to do the exact same thing. Drag an adjustment clip over our entire clip and trim it up to where the speed ramp changes happen. This is my custom motion blur. So check this out. So we have a speed ramp there and we have a speed ramp there. So what I'm going to do is come over here, put the speed ramping adjustments over it, fade them in, and then come over here to my JF motion blur and then grab it and drag it on top of the adjustment clips. And you have control over how much motion blur occurs. This motion blur will take up a lot of your computer's resources. So make sure to right click on it and select render color cache output. So now once the motion blur and this effect has rendered, this is what it looks like. Hope you guys enjoyed the plugins. Comment down below if you got it and you use it. I can't wait to see what you guys create with it. Lots of big things coming soon. See you guys in my next video.